Hi, my name is Avinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I'm very happy to teach you and give you tips on how to play Life of the Amazonia, designed by Jamie Bloom and published by Bad Comet. They actually sent me the game and asked me to play it, and if I liked it, to make a video. And I did, very much. I love how you build your own rainforest, the mechanism and the pace of the game. It's also very pretty. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button and the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It helps a lot. In Amazonia, you run your very own conservation organization to make the jungles of the Amazon flourish. Every game is completely different because there are so many elements that change. How you restore the rainforest by combining your terrain, all the animals, trees and aquatic flowers, as well as the insects and the scenic features to help the environment thrive and score the most points. And your jungle is never twice the same. Once five of the eight types of animals are placed, the game ends and the player with the most points from animals, terrain and vegetation wins the game. Now it's time to set up the game. Start by separating the terrain tiles from the player starting tiles that look like this. Shuffle the terrain tiles and place them face down in a pile. Flip the top three tiles. Each tile has three types of terrain, forest, river and marshland. There are also icons, which I will explain later. For now, you can keep this help card next to you to remind you what all the icons mean. Then place the supplies of the vegetation tokens. The trees, which will go on forests, the aquatic flowers to go on rivers and the seeds, which are like wild cards. Also place the special terrain you use to change terrain next to it. Place the waterfall of life on the table. You use it to keep track of your progress. The top level tracks your terrain tiles, this one your trees, this one your aquatic flowers, and here is where you can expand your storage. Then you place the eight types of animals you will use to populate your jungle. The eight types of animals are always the same, but you have different choices depending on the game you want to play. Check at the bottom right of the cards to see what sets you want to play, A, B, C, or D, or a mix of them. For your first game, it's best you use cards A only. They're easier to play. Then you place the meeples for each animal next to their card. Their number depends on the number of players. You can see it at the bottom right of the cards. Today I'm setting up a three player game. So you need to place four jaguars, four giant otters, five macaws, five caimans, six toucans, nine tamarins, nine leaf frogs, and nine woodpeckers. Also place the five complete tokens and the end game bonus token for easy access. Now you pick a color and you set up your components. Randomly take one of the four starting terrain tiles and place it face up in front of you. Like the other terrain tiles, they all have three types of terrains and some special icons. Make sure to give yourself some room as you will be adding more tiles to your jungle throughout the game. Take a bag in your color and collect your starting resource tokens. Three one currency tokens, two two currency tokens, two one leaf tokens, two one water tokens, and one two fruit token. Put them all in your bag, take your discard boat and place it next to you. Then take your four player markers and place them at the start of each track on the waterfall of life. It's time to add the insects and the scenery cards. Shuffle each deck and place them face down. Then flip the top three cards of each deck. Insects give immediate bonuses while scenery cards give end of game bonuses. Then take the two token vaults and place them on the table. Inside them, you have all the token upgrades you will need. Finally, each player gets to pick a unique animal. You draw two cards and you will pick one. Here is the requirement you need to first place that animal. And here is the special power you can use throughout the game once it's in your jungle. Here also these three dots show how difficult that animal will be to play. The orange ones are a bit harder than the green. Finally, here you see where you can place the animal. You place small animals on one hex, forest, water, or anything you want. Big animals need to go on two hexes two water hexes, one forest and one of your choice, or one marsh and one hex of your choice. Finally, if there's a seed here, collect one seed from the supply. You can check each unique animal in detail in page 26 of the rules. Now discard the animal you don't want and take the meeple of your animal. Now you're ready to start playing. Pick the first player, either randomly or the last one who watched the nature documentary, and the game can start. In Life of the Amazonia, you start by drawing five tokens from your bag. You play all your actions in that turn. There are eight possible actions. Let me start by explaining how you can purchase better resource tokens. 
You use currency tokens from your play area to buy tokens from the supply, like leaves, currency, fruits, and water tokens. Put the tokens you've used for the purchase, as well as the token you've just bought, into your discard boat. You can always use two tokens of any type or any value to replace a one value token. So you can use these two or these two to replace a one fruit if you want to buy a leaf frog. If you have used more than the cost, like here you spent five, you do not get your change back. You can use higher amounts to pay for more than one action if it's the same action. So if you're buying two, two currency coins, you can spend four. The same applies to the other actions, like the ones you take in the waterfall of life. Let me start by explaining um, the top level, which is where you get new terrain tiles. The top track on the waterfall of life is to place a terrain tile as shown here. To move it, pay the cost indicated at the bottom of the track. Here, one leaf token. Here it costs two and then three. If you have a three leaf token, you can move on the first and then the second space. Resolve each move at a time. Every time you move one step to the right, you collect one terrain tile. Pick it from one of the three face up here and immediately refill it. Then place it in your jungle by connecting at least two hex edges to your previous tiles. You cannot place it like this or like that or like this. The terrains do not have to connect, but you're likely to make more points at the end of the game if they do. <laughs> there are also some icons on the track. The purple icon here is to replace two of the terrain tiles, insect or scenery cards face up on the table. This green hex lets you take a special terrain tile, which you place immediately, either on top of a hex or next to it. All players who get to these icons get the benefit. However, the benefits of these icons with stars are only for the first player who gets to them. In a four player game, it's the first two players who get there who get the benefit. Now, the middle of the track in the Waterfall of Life is a bit similar, but you place a tree. Just like the previous track, each space costs leaves to get to, and you also have bonuses to collect along the track. Seeds. Here you collect one seed from the supply. You keep them in your play area, but do not count as one of the five tokens you pick each turn. Seeds can replace any one resource token anytime. And here and here, it's also just for the first player who reaches it. Remember that you can never have more than four seeds at a time. Now, in the middle track, every time you move to the right, you pick a tree. You must place this tree on one of your forest hexes. If you don't have a free forest, you cannot make the move. When you place your tree, you also immediately collect one of the special bonuses, if any. The bottom track on the Waterfall of Life is where you collect aquatic flowers. Unlike the previous two tracks, each space costs water to get to and the bonuses to collect along the track are yellow hands. These mean that you can take one extra resource token from your bag to use immediately. Like always, when you need to pick from your bag and it's empty, take your discard boat and place all the tokens back in the bag. The first come first serve bonuses here and here let you collect one seed. Of course, for each step to the right, you also collect one aquatic flower which you must place on one of your empty river hexes of your jungle. Like with the tree, if you don't have a suitable hex, you cannot perform the action. Finally, like for the other two previous tracks, these numbers in white represent points you will score at the end of the game. On the bottom right of the Waterfall of Life is where you can expand your storage. You start the game with only one token you can keep from one turn to the next. Spend water to move your token to the right and be able to keep one more token. There's also this grey cross icon, which lets you compost unwanted tokens. With it, you take one resource token from your play area or your boat and remove it from the game. You cannot take it directly from your bag. You're never forced to compost, you decide if you want to. Now there's one last action in the Waterfall of Life, um, which is to purchase a bonus. For three leaves, you can buy one seed. For seven currency, a special tile. For five currency, you can compost one token. And here for four currency, you can relocate a plant or an animal in your jungle. If you relocate, you need to meet the placement conditions and you do not collect a terrain bonus. Now, you can also use some of your uh, tokens to purchase a nature card, either an insect or a scenery card. All these cards cost water. And if you buy an insect, you resolve it immediately. If you buy a scenery card, keep it near your play area. You will score it at the end of the game. For more information on those cards, you can have a look at pages 27 and 28 of the rules. Finally, we can use some tokens to place an animal in your jungle. The cost of the animal is on the bottom left and always costs fruits, and sometimes also water or leaves. 
You must also check the type of terrain required. Small animals only require one hex. For the leaf frog, you can choose between marsh or water, and for the woodpecker, between marsh and forest. The toucan and the tamarind go anywhere. The other four are large animals and need to occupy two hexes, any of your choice, and a water for the caiman, and a forest for the macaw, and a marsh for the jaguar. The giant otter can be on any two hexes as long as they are the same type, like two water hexes, for instance. Each animal also brings its unique way to make points for your jungle. You will score these points at the end of the game. For now, pay the cost in token or seeds, put the tokens in your discard boat, and return the seed, if any, to the supply, and take one meeple of that animal and place it in your jungle. Collect the bonus immediately, if any. If you take the last animal of that type, place one of five complete tokens on it. And if you don't want or can't take any more actions, it's time to clean up. Check how many tokens you have left in your play area. And depending on where you are in the storage area, you can keep one, two or three tokens for the next turn. Return all the others to your discard boat unused. Keep all your seed and draw five new tokens from your bag. If you run out of tokens, take what you can from your bag empty your discard boat back in the bag and pick the balance. You should now have five to eight tokens in front of you. Then it's the player on your left to take a turn. Start this turn using this one currency and this one leaf tokens with this two water to buy a flower. You draw an extra token, compost the one currency token, spend one three leaf token to pick up a terrain tile, Spend the five fruits to buy a tamarind. Keep the two currency and the one water tokens and the seed for the next round. And it's time to clean up. The game goes on and on until a player places the last complete token and there are five animal groups completely used. That triggers the end of the game. That player collects the end game bonus token and finishes its turn as usual, but without the cleanup phase. Then all the other players take one more turn, one after the other, and it's the end of the game. Start counting points for each animal, starting with the woodpecker. Four points for each unique pair of woodpecker and tree. You cannot use each more than once. Same for each unique pair of leaf, frog and flower. The tamarind scores depending on the number of animals in its habitat. Other tamarinds do not count. Each toucan scores four points. Macaws and caimans score in the same way, with the number of trees in the macaws habitat and the flowers for the caimans. The otter scores depending on the size of its habitat. Finally, the jaguars score for each adjacent animal next to it, but other jaguars do not count. Refer to the rule book from pages 22 to 25 for animal cards B, C and D. Add and scenery card bonuses, the waterfall track points, one point for each seed, and finally five points for the end of game bonus. The player with the most points cultivated the most prosperous jungle and wins the Good Comet Society's grand prize. If they tie, it will be the player who placed the most animals, and if they still tie, they can share the win. Now my tips to win at Life of the Amazonia are make the most of the special powers you get from your unique animal card. Buying too much currency will weaken your engine, as you will have less leaves, fruits and water each turn. While others are playing, it's a good idea to organize your tokens and know what you want to do before your turn. It makes the game faster and a lot more fun for everyone. It's important to keep a strong play area, so don't hesitate to compost the value one tokens. For the same reason, it pays off to expand your storage early. That extra token can help a lot in getting the value three or four tokens. And that's how you play Life of the Amazonia. It's a wonderful game, equally good for two, three or four players. A perfect balance between complexity and spending all that time in your head and interaction with other players to execute your plan without a hitch. It's very exciting and I love it. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me by becoming a YouTube member on Patreon or buy me a coffee. The links are in the video description. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.